The following is a presentation of TFNN. The TFNN Bull Bear Trading Hour. Every trading day, live at 10 a.m. Eastern. Call now, toll free at 877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The TFNN Bull Bear Trading Hour. Now, Tom and Tommy O'Brien. Welcome, folks. We have the Dow Industrials up 275, NASDAQ is up 79, S&Ps are up 26, gold. Gold contracts down $17.10, trading at 1466 an ounce. You get silver down 42 cents, $16.63 an ounce. Light sweet crude up a buck 19, $59.62 a barrel, notes and bonds. You get the 10 year down 13 ticks, 128.28. You get the 30 year off uh, 21 at 157.23. And if you just read that update, folks, there's still uh, basically some huge divergence inside the broad market versus the bond market. Bond market is still uh, what we have just done in the 10 as well as the 30s. We've rejected lower price and we're going to have lighter volume. King dollar. King dollar is up by 317 ticks, trading 97,727. The euro is at 110. The yen is at 108.79. And the pound is at 131 to 1 US dollar. And as you come over to our website, folks, at TFNN, you're going to see um, Tom uh, every trading day right now, right under featured content. Morning Market Report, uh, he has one in the morning, one in the afternoon, and uh, Tom O'Brien, you had plenty to talk about this morning, man. <laughs> you know, there's been no shortage of news, and especially on Jobs Friday, non-farm payroll, and man, oh man, I'm sure we'll get into it, but 266,000 jobs added for November. The estimate was somewhere around 187,000. Pretty interesting in terms of even ADP private number came in at like 65,000 yes. earlier in the week. Um, but boy, oh boy, quite a number. And as you'd expect, markets trade higher, gold spikes lower. I was listening to your update with bonds as well. Lots going on out there this morning. And uh, man, we're only 38 minutes right now into the trading day. But boy, oh boy, quite a number, man, as if there's been a little bit of a worry about a stagnant economy. What's the Fed going to do? Yeah. But boy, oh boy, that is quite a number coming into the holiday season. So, folks, uh, every trading day now, just jump over to TFNN. You're going to see that right in the featured contents. It's there every day. Now, you also got Tesla gets an upgrade from Morgan Stanley. Oh, my God. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> yeah. This, yeah. Is, this is intriguing. Let's uh, they, they have a little bit of information. I was reading about that this morning, just Turk talking about um, the Cybertruck. So one of their analysts, Adam Jonas, said that, he sees Tesla selling 100,000 Cybertrucks by the end of 2024. So we're going out four or five years, but yeah. that truck's not going to start selling for two years at an average price of 50K. And um, additionally, that analyst Jonas believes Tesla's Gigafactory in China could perform better than anticipated and reach a production rate of 450,000 units per year by 2024, 2025. So the um, batteries are a big deal. Those, that, yes. those, the battery folks are a monster because. Uh, it's just not only they don't have to just sell them to themselves. If they get that battery deal down pat, everyone needs batteries. That's, now, that's the a only thing that I want to put as a caveat to that is Morgan Stanley's best quit, excuse me, best case, quote unquote, price target of two hundred and fifty dollars a share okay. remains unchanged. Um, so no, no change. And, and right now, Tesla is trading. At 336. Yeah, right. So, so yeah, how yeah. does that square? But uh, nonetheless, Tesla yeah. up almost 2% today. Interesting. Let's yeah. go take a look at the gold market. So we get gold down $16. GC gold are on the February contract. So let's see what we got here. Well, less is good. We're still not even at the swing point. Amazing. You know, you know what's funny is that when you're at larger numbers like this, I guess you're at 1466, $16, you know, is you know is is a good number, but in fact not not a monster number. Yeah, uh, right. It's barely one percent, one point one percent right now. It's showing. Yeah. Yeah. So our swing point here, folks, is fourteen fifty six. You've hit fourteen sixty four thus far. Um, fourteen six. Oh, this is going to be interesting. So what we had on Tuesday, you had a nice sign of strength on Tuesday. Gold went from fourteen sixty five to fourteen eighty seven. We did four hundred thousand contracts. Now, the way it's looking right now, it looks to me that we could do 400,000 contracts because we're at 210 right now, folks, at 1010. Now, what does happen is that most of this volume is going to come in by 1.30 Eastern Standard Time because that's when the 
um, basically the pit closes. And inside yes. the pit, the bottom line is they still get a lot of big trades that are in there versus electronic trades, you know, uh, throughout the day. So we'll see where that uh, baby shakes out. Now, the note and bond, now, Tom, this is like pretty wild, man. Because Yeah, I was listening to your update. You know, where, let me see, T-Y... You know, this is this is pretty hard to wrap your head around that we get an economy that's that's cooking. There's no two ways about that, man. You got jobs that are cooking. You know, I guess in, inside the jobs number two, there the, you had an additional forty one thousand that just came from GM. You know, which is yes. kind of interesting. Yeah, right? and that was part of an overall fifty four thousand gain in manufacturing, forty one thousand yeah. in quote unquote motor vehicles. So you know that, but that's a big portion of GM for sure. Sure. Now, if you're watching Tiger TV, folks, you're going to see we had a huge sign of strength on Tuesday. The 10-year went from 128.26 to 130.04. You did 2.3 million contracts. Now, at 1.1 right now, we've already rejected the 128.26. You know, if we get lighter volume here and you get a rejection, it's like, hey, guess what, man? They're still not selling notes and they're not selling bonds. And that's still saying that even in an economy that we have right now, that these rates are going to stay low. So <laughs> it's, yeah. it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a tough one to wrap your head around because what, you know, you're going to have Trump wanting lower rates. He's going to be hammering, um, you know, Powell. Now, he can't, yes. hammer, he can't hammer him today on it. He, he has to wait for a couple of days. You don't think days. so? No, because he's <laughs> got to forget that it's a big jobs number. I know. You know what I, mean? <laughs> I know. Uh, so we'll see. And as you say that, I have the TV on in the background. Just be interesting. You got Kudlow out there on Bloomberg Live in front of the White House um, cheerleading those numbers, I'm sure. So you're oh, going to yeah. have a lot of rhetoric out there today for sure. No doubt. Some of the higher volume equities uh, out here today, folks, uh, in this market. You get Bank of America. Uh, that's good. It's got a bid. That's up 60 cents. Uh, big Lots is up $5. That stock's been a mess, though. It's at $24.34. We have uh, Micron Tech up a buck thirty, buck uh, buck fifty. Rather, let's go see what Apple. Apple's up three forty. I was waiting for you to get there. Exactly. Yeah, this Quite must a be that's been a new all-time high, right? I think it might be. It's close, right up to that two sixty-nine. Uh, yeah. Yep, it is. There you go. Okay. So let's let's see. We hit two sixty-nine thirty-five today. And that's it. All right. So now yep. we have a market cap of almost 1.2 trillion. It's 1.195.5 trillion. 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 Yep. That's uh, an inconceivable number to most people when you try and put it in a, an understandable basis. Yeah, I know. Believe me. That's man. that's 12. That's 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 a one followed by 12 zeros. Um, is a trillion. Never never mind people. Used to talk, is that seven figures or nine figures? You're talking 12 figures, right? Yeah. That, that, and actually, actually, you're talking 13 figures 13 because figu it's 12 zeros one. with a one in front of it. Okay. You got it. That's pretty intense. It is. Let's man. go over to the oil market and take a look at oil. So you get the Saudis coming, they're saying that they're going to back down even more, meaning, yeah. of, you know, what they're More going cuts, to, right? Yeah. 500,000 barrels, um, more cuts than they even initially. And oil, you saw that spike. And look yeah. at that, man. It's over. It made it, it made it over the yeah. consolidation, 58F74. So you, what that does put game, it puts game with 61 here. The top of the, the very top is 61.48. Stay right there, folks. Tommy and I are coming right back. Our phone number is 877-927-6648. You get a job this Friday. Come in with big numbers. Push the S&P up uh, on the numbers like 17 points or up 28 points right now. I'll come right back. If you're not currently using the Taz Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The Taz Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, Taz understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the Taz Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the Task Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today.
Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow's up 266. You get the Nasdaq up 73. S&Ps are up uh, 25. And, you know, uh, take a look at this story, Tom. This is, you know, New York City, man. There's only one New York City. You know, and what you have here, folks, is that, uh, where am I now? Facebook. Here it is. Okay, so. I saw that you sent me that email over during the break. <laughs> yeah, for it's, it. you know, I've heard this for so many years, folks, okay? Like 30, 40 years that, you know, Bottom line is that, you know, New York's expensive, it's going to change, you know, people move out, and well, guess what, man? <laughs> Every single time, uh, there's just more big companies moving in. And what this is really about is that Facebook's is in, in talks for a New York office, uh, which would be making the company one of the city's largest. Facebook's in talk to lease a landmark Manhattan building in a deal that would make it one of New York's largest corporate uh, tenants and would help offset the lack of Amazon.com's second headquarters earlier planned for the city. The social media giant has an eye on 700,000 feet, <laughs> listen to that, 700,000 yeah. feet of space in the Farley Building, a vast post office undergoing mixed-use re redevelopment. The new space would be in addition, so check this out, in addition to Facebook's recent deal to lease 1.5 million square feet at the new Hudson Yards. It's like these tech companies, man, I mean, yeah. they, so this one here is saying that the new lease, uh, if the Farley deal is completed with the Hudson Yard deal, that's going to be 14,000 new, in, well, I don't know if they're new or they're transferring them, 14,000 sure, yeah. Facebook employees. 14,000. I mean, yeah. it's just, it's, it's phenomenal, man. 14,000. I mean, so there's some small towns that don't have 14,000 people in them. Yeah, and it'll be interesting to see in terms of if they get tax breaks or or, or what they get in in light of you know the how the Amazon, um, yes, deal kind of fell apart. And part of the you know critique of the Amazon deal was that you don't need to give away so much in New York City to get these companies to come. And that was part of what you right. know what I mean. It was that that you know if if you're a Midwest 
um, you know, bastion of farmland and That's you want right. to bring in a tech company that, that they don't have a reason to go there besides a cut. And it may actually spur an economic development that would not have happened without that type of a tax benefit. Then that's where it might make more sense than, in, you know, no, boroughs, no, no. They, you know, giving these yeah. tech companies, you know, so much money when in reality, if. Amazon didn't buy that space. Facebook's going to come in and buy that space. The jobs are going to get created. It's New York. So why are you taking all this taxpayer dollars to give these companies when really it's not an incentive that's necessary in New York? I, I yeah. you know, and it's it's such a complex debate. I would love to hear. And they'll talk about it now that Facebook's going to scoop up because that Hudson Yard, there were huge benefits that a lot of companies got to be in that Hudson Yard area. And that was kind of part of the critique on that as well, saying, right. you know, listen, all you're doing is you're taking some companies that were in Manhattan, you're putting them in a Hudson Yard, and you're giving them a boatload of state dollars to do it, when realistically, you know, it's not exactly the economic engine that, that, that those types of uh, incentives are supposed to provide. No doubt. And yeah. gonna have in the same article, folks, you know, Google is forming its own community in campus, like, kind of not under the weather. I mean, that, that's, yeah. you know, building by building by building. Um, it's pretty amazing, though. I mean, it really, it is. it's, it's, you know, when you, when you look at it, it's like, wow. Um, yeah. And then, you know what? Amazon's going to be back, too. Amazon will just end up, bottom line, you know, leasing something. And it, so so it, many of the it, new, I'm just reading, if you can stay with yeah. many of, oh, you'd, uh, just scroll up a little bit because yeah. they had the tech, the tech that Facebook isn't getting the same. Many of the new tech deals have been reached without significant incentives or extra tax breaks from the city. At Hudson Yards, Facebook isn't getting the same financial inducements like additional tax credits that were included in the package offered to Amazon. Right. So, you know, I know there was a lot of uproar and, you know, myself included saying, how are you going to, you know, not turn down? But this is kind of what, you know, the people that were, were in an uproar were saying that, listen, you know, we're giving all this taxpayer money to companies when we're Manhattan. We're, we're, yeah. we're New York City. All yeah. right. These, we don't need to do that. And this is um, a, a perfect example of, you know, Facebook, 700,000 square feet, 14,000 jobs. And it doesn't look like they're getting and maybe they're getting something, but something much more reasonable than than the millions upon millions that Amazon was being handed from taxpayers of the city. Right. Now, listen yeah. to this number, folks, okay? This is a monster number. So what happens in New York City, folks, okay, like the, the banking community, if you work at night in the banking community, uh, just about everyone, like you work for Morgan Stanley, Tom, or Goldman, or whatever, right? Okay. What happens, folks, is that <coughs> they have um, contracts with car services, personal car services, not Uber. They're all black cars. They're you okay. have drivers, right? Yes. And they don't want you driving, number one. <clears throat> so you're working late. You get picked up by a car. They're going to make sure you get home safe wherever you're going, right? Now look at this number. And so the tech companies evidently are doing this too. L look at the number. Of, this is an amazing number, folks. In 2018, okay, now for number of vehicles for higher vehicle drivers is 120,000. Yes. That's four times more than 2014. That is amazing. That, it's an amazing number. And if you're used to New York, you'd be really surprised that if you see in front of the banks, you know, you see the black cars lined up and it's not for the president coming in. It's, it's for sure. basically making sure people get home safe. That's what it comes down to. But that is a, that is a monster number, man. That's, yeah. that's just a huge number. I mean, even if you just do, you know, like 150,000, I just doing quick math to, you yeah. know, if you're making 150,000 a year and a lot of these people are making that at a minimum when you're talking about tech investors, right? They say well above that up yes. to 250, 350 easy when you're working in Manhattan, the cost of living alone, right. um, let alone, you know, the, the quality of skill that you possess as a worker. But if you're making $150,000 a year, you're making gross about almost 3,000 a week. All right. And if you're working 40 hours, which you're probably working more than 40 hours on that type of yes. a deal, but you're making about 75 bucks an hour. OK, now that's like the bottom basement. These are, you know, it makes more sense, man. If you have to sit in traffic for an hour. Right. Why that company is just they even they can pay you to be in a car and then you're on your phone even or you're working. You know what I mean? You're able to be on your laptop if you want to. You can start the day. It makes sense when you get up yes. to that type of pay that the company is willing to pay um, yeah, uh, an Uber can, driver $25 an hour, it might be, you know, or even more or less, however it works out, right, to sit in traffic in Manhattan while you're sitting in your car. When you start talking about those types of salaries, it just makes economical sense um, for them to have you start your job 
when you get into a car as opposed to sit in traffic. Um, no doubt. Let alone the safety if you're working late night. You know, it's a comp. It's an extra comp. People don't have cars in the city, so it's kind of an added comp to, oh, to yeah. pull in some of the best workers as well. So Amazon, guess what? I watched the NFL on Amazon last night. Did you? Good. I, I didn't did. check it out. We I were talking did. about folks. I showed them that I was on Amazon just looking at things. They were pumping that Bears game on Thursday night uh, on Prime. As and, soon as you uh, signed in, it was awesome. Yeah. Yeah. And it would really be interesting. We were saying, you know, Amazon would probably pay the money for exclusive NFL rights if the NFL would sell it to them. The NFL isn't um, that foolish because I think that would be a mistake because – Nobody has the ability to watch them all yet on Amazon, and the NFL wants to preserve that, you know, reach of being able to reach everybody oh, in the yeah. whole country. But man, oh man, it's coming. It, oh, it's definitely coming, man. I cracked up how easy it was. It was That's awesome. Joke. Nice. Stay right there, folks. Tommy and I are coming right back. We have the Dow Industrials up 261, Nasdaq up 73, S&Ps are up 26. Coming back. folks, Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over to the front page of TFNN and you'll find Market Insights under Trading Newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed Designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Tom and Tommy O'Brien. We do appreciate you growling and prowling with us out here. We have the Dow up at 271. NASDAQ is up 74. S&Ps are up 26. Let's cross that Atlantic and uh, talk to Kenneth from the U.K. Kenneth, what's going on? Yeah, that's a great question. I'm one of your subscribers. 
and I have about uh, 5,000 uh, shares of JNUC. So I just want to get your valuable opinion whether to sell them, hold, or put a limit order, or what to do. And what did you did you just buy this? Or did you have held this for a while now? JNUG, folks, is the Direction Daily Gold Miners three times uh, leveraged product. So that's right. So you're down 290 right now. You're trading at 65.14. And, I mean, you understand these are daily investment vehicles, right? Yeah, you know, unfortunately, I had uh, this stuff at least for a few months now. So that's why, you know, the worries. I, I, I bet. So what are you in it at? How much money? Uh, sorry, couldn't hear you. How much money are you in the trade at? Yeah, I have uh, almost um, six thousand shares of JNAC, So I understand that, uh, but what price, price? What price did you buy them at? Uh, um, uh, the main price uh, was sixty-seven dollars, and the other one is uh, eighty dollars. That because I bought a portion of it when it was high, I see. but then since then it came down, you know, okay. right now you're 64 point something. Okay, sure. so this is what I would do. Uh, what you have with JNUG right now, folks, is that we, we went topside on Tuesday. You had uh, decent volume. You're backing down today. You've already rejected lower price at this 63.23 uh, area. I'd stay right there, but you got to understand that the way that... Okay, so your worst case scenario, Kenneth, would go like this. Is that mm -hmm. if the let's go GDXJ? So if we go to the GDXJ, I'm, the reason I'm going to the GDXJ, folks, is that this trades the J Nug trades off the GDXJ. That's that's the the main basis here. So we've been in a consolidation now, going all the way back to September 9th. Okay. We get a break out of this consolidation because what happens, Kenneth, in a, in a consolidation, whether you had a bullish position or a bearish position in a levered product, they would both lose value. That's, mm -hmm. how, that's how it works when you don't have a trend going on because each and every time you're going up or going down, they reset themselves every day, okay? So mm -hmm. the bottom line is that I'd stay right where you are right now. Uh, you know, the bottom line is that, you know, what this did out, the GDXJ out here today, your gap was at $38.29. We went to $38.41. You rejected it. You're at $38.79. Um, you know, bottom line is that, let's go over to the J Nugget now. And don't buy any more, okay? Yeah. I, I, so you've been trading this for a while, right? I mean, the leveraged product, right? Yeah. Yeah. So what yeah. happens, folks, yeah. what you hear, and now listen, I'm with you, I, I get it. What, what happens, folks, is this, is that if you're right on the, these are daily investment vehicles. The, 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 the kicker here is you don't go out and buy five or 6,000 shares of these unless you've been trading it for a while. And what ends up happening is that if we are in a bull, which I think we are, you'll, you'll get bailed out, um, you know. So I would, just, I would just hang right there. I mean, you, you haven't broken down yet, you know, underneath this uh, 6233, so... Uh, and, you know, we're going to need volume coming into it. You know, if we, if we go over and we take a look at the dollar, you know, the dollar is not going leaps and bounds up here. We have 323 ticks at 97,733. And if we do go into the gold market, the, the gold contract itself, GCG, has, you know, it will come down hard. But now what you can see is that when we started the program, we were at 210,000 contracts. So what, you, what is happening right now is that the contract volume is contracting. It's, it's hard to tell how much you're going to get. You don't, we don't want 400,000 because that's what we went up on. We're at two, 231,000 right now. And you want to see this gold contract close over 1465.40. If that's what you get, then it's like, okay, so gold still wants higher price. So you got to... You gotta, you get, you get a lot of pressure on you, man. That's the real bottom line, you know. But I'd, I'd stay right there. Don't sell them out at this point. Just don't sell them out at this point. Because the notes and bonds are also saying 
they still want higher price. If notes and bonds want higher price, guess what? Asset, hard assets in general, you know, and that's that's a twist. I mean, this this note and bond market, you know, it just doesn't stop. And if rates, you know, are going to stay low, even if the economy is booming beyond belief, well, guess what? Gold's going to continue higher. You know, the the 10-year note. We just went from 128.21. We're up another full t 10 ticks. This is this looks like it's going to be a total rejection of lower price out here today. So. So by next so week, do you um, see any kind of positive outlook in the trade talk? You know, I mean, uh, if uh, trade talk fails, then the gold will go up next week. I would say that the the market itself. Uh, the, my understanding is the first part of the trade talk. If we get the first series done, all that's going to do is say that okay, we're not going to put the new tariffs on December fifteenth. Really, okay, so it's not like this thing's going to be over. You know, December 15th is a big number, and we're at, what are we, at the 6th today? Yes. Okay, yeah. so if, if, all, if those tafts go on on December 15th, this market will go south in about two seconds. Because the market, I don't think the market's expecting that we're going to put those tafts on the 15th, because we're talking consumer goods now, and, yeah. you know, we got an election going on. It's like, okay, you're really going to... You know, business-wise, are paying big taxes right now with, with tariffs coming in. But if they're going to, you know, the way Apple's trading a new all-time high, Apple will be one of the biggest companies to get hit with those tariffs. I don't think we're gonna, that's going to happen, you know. So it's a wild card, man. Either, either way, I think gold, gold's going higher because I think the dollar's going lower. You know, I think the b next battle is going to be if Trump's going to have a battle, he just might want a currency war. He needs, he's going to need some kind of a wad to keep everyone busy. You know what I mean? So um, I think that might be the next thing that plays out. Because, you know, he can turn around and tell Mnuchin, start selling dollars. You know, people say that, okay, that's never going to happen. Well, guess what? He can do it. He, the, the treasury, he can, he can direct the treasury to sell dollars. And if we ever wake up in the morning and he directs the treasury to sell dollars because he thinks that other countries are manipulating their currencies, you will see, uh, you know, you'll see some... You'll see hard assets get very strong, you know, so. I wish I had a better answer for you, you know, that's. Oh, uh, no, that's quite yeah. good enough. Yeah. So thank you very much for your answer. Thank you, man. Appreciate it. Okay. Thank you. Bye-bye. There's so many moving parts to this, Tom. Do you know what I mean? It's, there sure are. You know? There are. I mean, it's always intriguing, even the jobs number, right, where, um, you know, the market loves it. But what happens with interest rates now? Are we are that, we gonna that, talk about raising rates again? I was surprised to see no hesitation in the market. That uh, totally, I'm saying yeah. I can't even believe that the, the, as we're talking, the ten is only down eight ticks now. Right. Stay right there, folks. Tommy and I come right back. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN.
Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow's up at 282. You get the Nasdaq up 76. S&Ps are up 27. Let's go over to the Dow and see if, if that, uh, how close we are to a new all-time high there. Well, yeah, it's still a bit away from us. So we're up 282. You're 27,966. It's 28,174. That's the number there. Okay. About 200 Dow points. Yeah. So if we take a look at the uh, point moves inside here. You got, uh, well, look at this, 3M putting 48 points, Boeing putting 33, Goldman putting 30. Um, only Dow, Dow stock that's in the negative here is that you got uh, United Health, 15 ne negative. Um, you know, the Saudi Arabia deal, folks, uh, Tommy, let's go over this thing. So you had the, uh, you yeah, know, it was in Vienna. They, they were meeting the last couple of days in Vienna. And so the, the headline here is Saudi Arabia surprised the oil market by prom promising significant additional cuts beyond what was agreed to with fellow OPEC plus members in Vienna. After two days of talks in Vienna, they had focused on adjusting the group's quota to formalize recent output levels and redistribute cuts more equitably among members. The Saudi uh, minister uh, sent prices soaring with the promise to take the kingdom's production down to levels not seen on a sustained basis since 2014. So they're saying that, the Saudis are saying that they came to a conclusion of what they're supposed to do, and now they're going to voluntarily cut an additional 400,000 400, barrels a day, folks, you know. So um, that brings the total cuts implemented uh, by the uh, OPEC countries and its allies to 2.1 million barrels a day. Man, there must be a lot of oil out here, huh? If they have to you cut. know, it's rem it's just remarkable that, of course, they're doing it on literally almost the day of the IPO yeah. for Saudi Aramco. Right. And, you know, wh what's going to happen in <laughs> a month or two when, when they want to turn the spigot back on and they already have – you know, all their all their local rich businessmen and women that they locked up at the Ritz into the company and they they have to hold it. They can't sell it for a period of time. And they got their one point seven trillion dollar valuation. Right. And and now they want to turn back on the spigot to start making some more cash by selling that oil. What's um, it's just an intriguing play into how things are working in that market right now. Hey, and you can see, you know, I mean, talk about oil. They just cut 2.1 million barrels a day, folks, okay? That doesn't take much, you know, that's 60 barrels, you know, what? No, that's yeah, 60 million barrels a month, <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. 60 million barrels a month, okay? That's how much yeah. oil's out there. And I would say that when, when real big oil producers see something like that, meaning the users rather, right? They're saying, hey, man, you, you're not going to, you're going to, I don't know how, care how much you cut. You're not going to be able to bring this up that dramatically if there's that much sitting sit out there. And then the real question is going to be is that what do the other countries do, you know, right. saying, okay, I got to 
I'll, I got to send another three or four hundred thousand barrels out a day. Yeah, because you know? the last comment in that article says that's too low for most OPEC members to balance their budgets. Yeah, you know, it, it would make an unfortunate ep epilogue for the record-breaking IPO. Um, yeah, I mean, they, they, a lot of those countries, man, they need to sell oil to balance their budget. So, we'll see how that goes. All right now, I'm going back to the bond market, folks. Is this, this is so unusual? It's crazy. There's something that's going on out here today, like right now. The, if we go over to the 30-year, when I started the show, the 30-year, okay, Tommy and I started the show, the 30-year was at 157.05. We're at 158.03. It's only down eight ticks. It's, not yeah. really, it's like, And maybe that's a little bit of what I had talked about, man. You know, it's, it's a messed up world we live in where when things go well, the market says, oh, no, wait a second, maybe it's too well, and maybe the Fed's going to start thinking about raising interest rates again. I mean, if we start adding 300,000 jobs a month, man, why are we at record low interest rates and worried about, you know, the future? As in, I, I, I would love to see the next time that Powell sits down and, and talks about whether it's this number, what happens when we come into January? We get a lot of December jobs. That's a great month, usually December, right? Oh, yeah. Um, so what happens when we have back-to-back -back $250,000 job ads and the Fed says, nope, we're not even thinking about you know, cutting. Um, well, it, it just, I, I feel like it might be playing into that. I, listen, man, it, it's, it's all of the above because it's pretty yeah. intense. You know, this is, is, you know, normally, folks, okay, what would happen here? The note and bond market should absolutely be toasted today. Mm -hmm. They should be throwing these things overboard, okay? Yes. And we know they haven't been doing it for a long period of time. Right. But this is monster divergence. You're talking about a Dow that's up 300 points, an S&P that's up 28. You already fundamentally know that the jobs were there, are there, all of the above. Now, all that being said, guess what? The note and bond market, I don't know if whether they're just not believing it, Tom, or they're saying, I don't care. I'm buying it anyway because I think yeah. interest rates are going to go lower longer. <laughs> right. It's like, can you can you go over to the Fed fund futures when you get a yes. moment? I'm just curious yeah. if anything's happened to that. Um, Something's happened since we've been on. I think. I I, I just I can't. It's quite pitch. a reversal. That's yeah, for sure. it is. Let's see. As of February 20th, upgrade. You have an option to upgrade early. Uh, I won't upgrade yet. I, I like to do that, but let's just close this one right now. Um, okay. So I got them up here. Let's see what we're looking at here. They, so right now we're in the 1.5 to 1.75 column. Right. And it looks like the next. Oh, they have us. They do have a small chance of a hike. Oh, look at like, that! That's the first. How about yeah. that? That's the yeah. first we've seen in a while, folks. Okay. Is it? okay. Yeah. Can... That's that's a that's a change. So December yeah. 11th meeting, you get a three percent chance of a hike. Yeah. And then it goes down. <laughs> It goes yeah, down from know, there in right? 2020. Intriguing. It goes down, folks, okay? And it probably is because, you know, I was saying maybe there's still that pessimism into the next year of the economy, but maybe they're saying, geez, but what about right now, man? Things are marching. Maybe this would be um, another chance to do a one-off, but we saw how that went last time. And yeah. That didn't seem to work too well, so I would no. hesitate to think Powell. But I would love I, – I can't wait to see the next press conference and, and Powell try and navigate – how we're now back to $260,000 jobs added for the month, and somehow we can't even think about Going raising up. interest rates. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, there's, there's no doubt. There's, there's no doubt. This because is... what we have to, people should be not, not up in arms, right? But we need room to be able to cut interest rates when the market has problems and when the economy has problems. Right. And we're at 3.5% unemployment rate. And, you know, we have our president slamming that rates should be lower like this. We're going to go through a lot of pain if we have an economy slowdown and the Fed has no room to spur economic growth. And that's right where we are right now. So that's what people should be aware of. No, no. Hey, listen, we get negative rates. Yeah, yeah exactly. It's, it's absolutely wild. No, no yes. doubt about that. Ulta. Let's go take a look at uh, Ulta. Oh, boy, Ulta huh? came out last night, folks. And now uh, this stock has got hammered. Uh, you know, it's up good right now. It's up 28 bucks. But that's down. We're at 264, and that's down from uh, 368. Let's see what they had to say here. I'm sure our man Kevin Hinks, uh, they were having some fun with that yesterday. You know, just before you jump into it, the expected move, right, was about 21 to $22. So even with an 8 to 9%, it, it beat the expected move on volatility. Look at that, huh? 
Yeah. So, uh, oh, stay right there, folks. Tommy and I will come back with uh, Ulta. We have the uh, Dow Industrials up 308. NASDAQ is up 83. S&Ps are up 30. We'll come right back. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. If you're a trader in the market looking for exposure to gold or gold mining equities, then now is a perfect time to sign up for Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. The summer is over, gold is trading back above $1,500, and the 10-year treasury is hovering at around 1.5%. Tom O'Brien has been writing his weekly gold report for almost 18 years. There's no one that knows more about how the gold market trades and how gold mining equities react. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, Tom publishes his weekly gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. As of September 3rd, Gold Report subscribers have five active open positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 38% for each position. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up today by visiting TFNN.com. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow's up 300, Nasdaq's up 81, S&P's up 29. If we look at these numbers on Alta, you know, I mean, the stock has got smoked. There's no doubt about that. But these are, these are decent numbers, man. It, it, the comp sales uh, are down. So the big brick mortar is down. They, they were looking for 7.8% on a comp. They got 3.2. Um, fiscal, so go ahead. Just, they, that was year on year. They actually beat. They were looking for 3.1. They're still up, but just. I see. Okay. To put. Because, I mean, it's, it's just they're, they're not really down. They, they're oh, just I down okay, on a year-on-year, cool. year, yeah, yeah. but year they still year. grew by 3.2% comp sales, and they right. even beat the estimate. Right. I got um, it. Okay, cool. Yeah. And then inside here, they, I would think one of the big ones, look at this e-commerce comp sales, folks. They're, they're looking year. So that would be fiscal year. That's the e-commerce uh, comp sales plus 20 to 30%. Pretty cool. Now that's pretty intense because if that you've is. ever seen these Ultra stores, folks, these Ultra stores are they're, they're huge. They're like they're like uh, Home Depots, except that 
They got all little tiny bottles that cost, you know, big money, and the mock-up yes. is like extraordinary. <laughs> yes. Um, but if they're if they're driving e-commerce comp sales, you don't even go to the place. Yeah, but, I wonder how. What's a comp sale when when it's e-commerce? Yeah, I, I don't know. They right? probably start just... at a small number, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, net sales 1.68 billion. It's a big number, man. Uh, yeah, that's for 90 days, right? Yeah. 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 Amazing. That's yeah. third quarter net sales. That really is. It is. Let alone, that's probably not their biggest quarter, man. They probably Christmas time. You know the malls? I mean, oh, what are yeah. they going to do? They're probably going to do $2 billion almost for Christmas season. Not a bad company, man. No. It's, it's a huge number. Yes. And, you know, so we're at a Jobs Friday, folks. Uh, you get the Dow's up uh, 30. Uh, Dow's up 300. Uh, S&P's are up 30. Stay right there, folks. we got Think and Swim coming up next. Then we got uh, uh, Steve Rhodes, Dave White. I'll be back this afternoon. Thanks, pal. Thanks, man. Okay, you Stay too. Stay right Love there, you. folks. Think and Swim's coming right up.